Welcome into our discussion about jewelry displays. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose just the right display that makes your work pop, that makes people sit up and take notice so they want to take it home with them. And there are a lot of factors to consider when doing that. We're going to cover all of those today. I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain. And in my years of making and selling jewelry, I have learned so many tips and tricks and hacks having to do with display and how to make that appropriately frame your jewelry so the display recedes and your, your jewelry pops. We're going to talk about each of those. So there's seven categories for us to cover today. The first one is contrast. And then size, earring displays, bracelet displays, footprint, portability, and finally, style cohesion, display contrast. So when we're talking about display contrast, I'm going to move over to these three necklaces and earring sets here. They are fantastic sets of jewelry, just beautiful. But the way that I've set them up on these busts is wrong. And I want to show you why, and then we're going to correct it. And I'm going to show you how a better contrast makes your jewelry pop. So let's start, start over here with this white bust. This white bust has this beautiful rose quartz and sterling silver set on it. Fantastic set. Um, it's really unique style. But setting it on this white bust washes it out. It doesn't pop. It doesn't show it to advantage. It blends into the display and across the room, you're probably not going to notice it. Let's move over to this black bust. On this black bust, we've put this beautiful black leather set. It's blingy. It's, it's fashion forward, very trendy, beautiful set, but it blends completely into the black leather at bust it's not displayed to its advantage. And last, let's look at this natural bust where we have this uh, gold filled and sunstone jewelry set. It really does show a little bit on this set. It's very style cohesive, but I feel like this gorgeous sunstone and the gold blends too much into this kind of golden tone fabric. So let's change it, let's make it better. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the necklaces. We'll leave the earrings on so we could see what the contrast was originally. I'm just going to move these down here. So let's start with the sunstone necklace. When I put it on the black bust, look at how the gold and the sunstone really pops. Across the room, you can see that. And with a good jewelry display, someone is going to notice your piece from a distance away and be drawn over to it. This does that job. Now, if we put the sunstone and gold over here on the white bust, it also pops a lot better than on the bust that it blended into. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the white. I feel like this is a really nice contrast. It shows the piece to great advantage. So let's take the rose quartz necklace and let's put that on the black. Look at the difference. You can see this rose quartz and, and sterling on the white. It so blends in. But when we put it on the black, magic happens. You really see that sterling pop and you really see the pink in the rose quartz better. This is really going to make someone fall in love with the piece. So contrast is really important. Now let's take this great black leather piece and put it on the natural bust. This lighter color really draws the eyes into these great leather loops. It really makes people notice that style and how fun and interesting that is. That's going to make someone want to take that home and put it around their own neck, right? Great information here on really making your piece fit the background that is the display. We want the background to recede and we want the piece to come forward. Display size. Now the display size is really important because we're talking about framing your piece. So I'm going to bring this bust down here so you can see it better. 
So you can see we've got this beautiful big leatherette bust and we've got this small but elegant amethyst necklace. Now this is actually a fairly large faceted piece and it's one that a lot of people will just fall in love with. But there's so much real estate around the piece. So the ratio of the jewelry to the display is really uneven. It's too much display. It's too much background. Let's go ahead and pull this little guy out. I love these little displays. And we've got this wonderful key necklace. Keys are really popular right now. Um, it's got a really nice chunky kind of a paperclip type chain, um, which is really fashionable but you can't see much of the chain. And the focal is falling off the bust. This is not a great way to display this piece. Um, there's not enough real estate around that focal to really show it off. So let's switch. I wanna switch up and see what a difference we can make. So let's go ahead and put this piece on this bust. Look at how that frames that. Isn't it beautiful? We've got just the, the right amount of real estate outside. It's balanced with what's inside here. Uh, the, the drop is appropriate here. It really makes this piece pop. I love it. And then this cute little shorty bust. These are absolutely great for a piece like this faceted necklace. So this has this great little elastic on the back. I'm just gonna drop the chain through the elastic and pull it through and let my pendant fall to the front of the bust. Um, so it takes up the slack of the necklace and you really see the beauty of that faceted amethyst then. This is a really appropriate display for this. It's just the right size. So you can see how size makes such a difference in how you display your jewelry and how it pops to the person you're presenting it to. Display of earrings. Earring displays are really important. Earrings are one of my very favorite types of jewelry and displaying them to their best advantage will help them sell. So let's look at a few different types of earring displays. These are all single earring displays. So we have these great gemstone point earrings with the little hoops on them and they look okay on this display. But it's very tall and there's a lot of um, negative space here. So I would probably prefer to have those on a bit of a smaller display that really frames them a bit better. Now these gorgeous amethyst hoops um, with the purple wire there are very trendy. It's a very hot style. And they look okay on this display. But I would actually really like to elevate these, put them in a larger display and really let that be seen a little bit better. So let's just take one off here and one off of here and let's trade and see what it looks like. So we had our amethyst earrings on the smaller one and the gemstone earrings on the bigger one. But when we trade up, look at how much better elevating that hoop allows someone to see the detail and it frames that large hoop a lot better. Then when we put the gemstone on this cute whale tail display, we've got the frame around that earring. It really shows it to better advantage. Now with these earring card displays, I absolutely love this kind of display. And the reason that I love this kind of display is that it gives a natural backdrop for your earrings so you can really see all the details. Um, when you have a display like this, and you're looking at it from far away, from across the room, you see right through the display and you see all of the things going on behind it. If you can see my hand there. So you don't focus on the earring. When you use a card display like this, it stops your eye at the earring and really makes you focus on the detail. See all the work that you've put into that and really wanna wear it. All right. Let's talk about larger earring displays and multiple earring displays. So we'll look over here at this tower. This tower is a great way to display multiple earrings. One of the things I love about the tower is it 
it um, promotes interaction because you actually have to move it to see what's on the other side. And that kind of engages your brain a little bit. Just, just that little bit of movement. I absolutely love that. You can put a lot of earring cards on the towers and they come in all sizes. It also gives height to your earrings and, and um, makes it more eye level. So um, it kind of draws the eye from the table up and down and that's a really good way to engage people. This display is another great way to display your earrings. You can see that you put, can put them on the cards here or you can put them right through the holes in the rack. So great way to display lots of multiple earrings. Display of bracelets. Let's talk about bracelets. I feel like they're kind of the underdog of the jewelry world. We don't talk about them enough and I absolutely love them. And there are great ways to display bracelets and not so great ways. And I think the real key to displaying bracelets is ease of picking it up and putting it down you really want people to interact with your bracelets. You want them to pick them up, feel them, feel how they are on their wrist. There's so much skin contact with a bracelet that you wanna know how that feels on your arm before you buy it. So being able to just get it easily and try it on is absolutely key with, with no problems there. So let's look at this T-bar display. I'm gonna pull that over here. This is a really classic bracelet display that you'll see a lot, and it's really great for certain kinds of bracelets. It really helps you show the focals to advantage, show really all around, it keeps them nice and neat. You can put a lot on there. And when you have this kind of an open bangle like this, or like this one over here, um, it's really easy to get on and off the display to try on. It's very comfortable to do perfect display for this kind of a bracelet. Or if you have a bracelet with a toggle clasp, it's also fairly simple to undo that toggle, take the bracelet off, try it on, and then hand it to the clerk to put it back on and refasten. No problem. Or someone can feel comfortable doing that themselves. Now, if you have a bangle, a closed bangle like this, it's really not ideal for this kind of a T-bar. And the reason that is, is that if you want to take that bangle off, you've got all of these bracelets in front of it. And you really can't control when people take them off and put them back on the position of your bracelets on the T-bar. It's going to change constantly. So if you have a bangle like this, I wouldn't actually put it on a T-bar. Um, same with another type of closed bracelet like this stretch bracelet. For that kind of a bracelet, I really like a simpler display. So if you have like a plate or um, a pad to put them on, it's great to stack them like that. It really gives visual interest. There's this kind of a display. This is great for portability too. We'll talk about that later. Um, great for a bangle, other bracelets too. There's this pillow display. These are fantastic. You can put all the different types of bracelets on this. There is a ramp display. There is this watch type display. This is fantastic. Very easy to use. It's also very adjustable. So when we're talking about linear bracelets, and with a linear bracelet, I'm talking about a bracelet like this toggle class bracelet that looks really great laid out. I love a ramp display like this. It really shows everything about that piece, all the nice little details to your person. Now, if you don't have a lot of real estate and you don't want to have a lot of individual displays, but you have these linear bracelets to display, this display over here is absolutely fantastic. You'll see that it has those little hooks at the top to hook your lobster claw or your toggle into. And it's got this great elastic band at the bottom that um, you can slip your bracelets under for travel and they won't move around. And when you get to your show, you just take them out and there's a lot of easy access for people to pick them up and put them down. Display footprint. The footprint of your display refers to how much space your display takes up um, in comparison to how much space you have to display. So if you look at this bus display, 
This takes up, I would say, somewhere around nine inches of space, just about on your table, and it will display one necklace, maybe two if you work it right, um, appropriately. This is kind of display is great if you have a lot of space and not a lot of inventory to show. Now, if you have more inventory to show and not a lot of space, Something like this that actually has six different attachments for necklaces is a better way to use your space. Um, we'll talk more about this when we go into portability because it is really great to move around as well. But as far as footprint goes, this takes up the same footprint as this larger bust, but displays six times the material appropriately. Okay. Let's look at the earring racks again when we're talking about footprint. Now the earring racks, we'll take this tower down here for a second. This has just about a six inch footprint and that's diagonally. That's really the space that it takes up in total, um, which is very small, but it's tall and you can put a lot of earrings on this rack. So if you have a lot of inventory and not a lot of space, this is a great choice. Now, if you have less inventory to show and more space, this rack might be a better choice for you. This has more like a 12 inch footprint side to side. It will take up about twice as much space as this one and display about the same amount of jewelry. Display portability. How easy and how light your displays are to take down and put up when you're traveling is really, really important. You want something that's going to look impressive and give you different heights and draw your eye without having the bulk of these heavy busts and displays like that. So we have some great options for portable displays if you're traveling and doing shows. You know, over my um, years doing jewelry shows, I really learned how valuable it is to have packable, um, condensable display that is still really pretty. So let me show you some different options here. You can see I have three displays packed on top of each other. In a box, this would take up almost no room. You could put it in the bottom or the top. Fantastic for portability, lightweight, and the less you have to lug around when you're doing a show, the more comfortable you're going to be, the less time it will take you. So you get a better return on your investment of time. So this necklace display is a great option for a portable single necklace display, or you could maybe do two on here depending on the necklace, and it just snaps together in the back. It gives you a little bit of height, and if that's still not enough height for you, if you want a portable display that's a little taller, you can use these acrylic risers that we have here and set that on top of a riser and it gives you almost the same height as a standard bust. Really great option and these nest and will stack together. So really great choice, let me leave that there. Okay. Let's look at this one. This is a great necklace display. You can see that it has these little um, grooves so you can actually put two different necklaces on here. So you can put a couple of choices here if, if you have the right kind of necklace. And it's just got this little kickstand on the back. So you just pull this up and it stands beautifully. It will stay. And little tip trick if you're at a show and um, it's windy, you can just add a little weight to the back of this and it will stay even through the wind. Great choice for portability. And then again, the necklace display that we showed earlier that shows so many necklaces, same type of kickstand, lays flat, they're perfect. Let me show you another type of display that is great for portability for shows. These card type displays. This one would be for maybe a necklace. This one would maybe be for a small pendant or an earring. These are fantastic because they don't have the kickstands. They just stand on their own. Very simply, you don't have to do anything. There's a little Velcro back here to hold your chain if you need to do that. 
The great thing about these is they nest together. So if you have a bunch of them, you just put them together and they don't take up a lot of space. And they're very rich looking with the velvet. I really enjoy these a lot. Um, one more, actually a couple more little portable displays I'll show. This one is a really fun one. Check this out. It's on a little pivot and it has all of these spaces and you would put maybe a small pendant or a chain on this and it folds up real small to put in your box. Really, really like that. And last for portability, I want to show you this great option. Look at this cute little box. You just unsnap it, unroll it, and you have space for all of these earrings. You can just lay that on your table. You could prop it if you want. And it comes with this bonus little T-bar inside for your bracelets. You could set that next to it. And then when you're done with your show, you just roll that back up and snap it. So easy and so small. Display style cohesion. So the type of jewelry you're making is best on a display that echoes the jewelry. You want there to be contrast, but you want the style to be cohesive. It really calls attention and sets a mood, sets a vibe that will call people into your jewelry that will enjoy the jewelry. So if you look over here at this great wood display with the bamboo inset, we've got some fabric there, and we've got this great kind of boho themed jewelry. I absolutely love it. And it really fits the style. It really calls to the kind of person that would love wearing that piece. Um, you want to enhance the piece, I guess I would say, without distracting. That bamboo inset in the middle really shows the piece to advantage. Um, but all of the natural tones and the muted tones really just says boho and will call in those people. Now, if we're looking at this one, we've got this really nice classic large pendant and we've put it on this gray um, velvet bust. It's really fantastic here. It shows it to advantage. It keeps it very simple and very elegant, very in keeping with the style of the piece. Now let's look over here at this wonderful uh, bumblebee set with the uh, multicolored honeycombs. Fantastic set and it really speaks for itself. It's fun, it's playful, and it really draws the eye in. We put that on that white bus so it would just recede. It's just a backdrop, it's just a background. We don't want anything too crazy because we want this piece to really be able to speak to the person that it's meant to live with. So style cohesion is really important in making sure that we are really capturing the vibe of the piece to bring in the right customer to your piece. I hope that being with me here today in this discussion has really helped you take away some great knowledge on choosing just the perfect display. Um, to really set off the creativity and the whimsy of your own jewelry, you can play with the rules, do it your way, but it's nice to have this little bit of foundation so when you're making choices, you really feel confident that you've got the right display to make people sit up and take notice of your work and just wanna take it home. Make sure and check out our website for more great information on displaying your jewelry, on making your jewelry, on selling your jewelry. Make sure and like, share, comment your questions. We would love to answer those for you. Follow or subscribe to us on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you want the insider information on all our upcoming promotions, specials and sales, make sure and subscribe to our email list. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We will see you next time.